Welcome to the Audacity to Podcast, episode 124, 10 Reasons to Get a Mixer for Podcasting. Thank you for joining me for the Audacity to Podcast. I'm Daniel J. Lewis, and this is an award-winning how-to podcast about podcasting and using Audacity. It's where I give you the guts and teach you the tools to podcast with passion, organization, and dialogue. Today, I'm answering a question that came in from Savage Tech Man on Twitter, and he asked about the pros and cons of using a mixer and why should a podcaster get a mixer? Does a podcaster really need a mixer? Do you need a mixer? So I've come up with 10 reasons why I think you should get a mixer for podcasting. And I would love to hear from you what reasons you would have in addition to these, or if you disagree with any of these reasons or have some other experience that you'd like to share related to mixers. Any links that I mention and your comments also would be great to have over at the show notes at theaudacitytopodcast.com slash 124. I would love to hear your feedback there. And also tell me what kind of mixer you're using with your podcast. I'd love to know what you're using out there. So I've got 10 reasons for you. And the main obvious reason, and this isn't in my number of lists or my top 10 list, but this is basically the essential reason. You want a mixer for a podcast so you can mix audio. That's the main reason to get a mixer is so you can mix things. Yeah, it seems so profound, so blatantly obvious, but that's really the main reason you'd want to get a mixer. That's what it all comes down to. If you want to mix more than one bit of audio, then I highly recommend a mixer. So that means if you're doing anything other than just recording yourself straight into your computer, adding no sound effects, no intros, no outros, no co-hosts, no voicemails, nothing like that, no live streaming, if you're doing just that, then you might not need a mixer. But if you're doing anything more than that, I recommend a mixer for it, and a mixer will save you time, it will save you frustration, it will save you effort. And so here are 10 reasons to get a mixer for your podcasting. Number one, Skype Mix Minus. There are a lot of programs out there that can record Skype calls, like there's Ecamm Call Recorder for Skype or Pamela. Uh, Ecamm is for Windows, or I'm sorry, Ecamm is for OS X and Pamela is for Windows. And I have affiliate links for those at theaudacitypodcast.com slash 124. But both of these programs work on your computer and record your Skype call. And they do a really good job of it. But this is putting your reliance on your computer to do the recording. And this has its pluses and minuses in addition to the whole reliability issue of being on your computer. Each app has its own limitations as well. They do work really well, but not the absolute best or the absolute most flexibility. If you run what we call a mix minus setup on your mixer, that's where you connect a computer or a device, any kind of device, that is plugged into your com- into your mixer. That device will handle your Skype calls. You plug it into your mixer, and its output goes into your mixer, and everything that goes into your mixer is going out to a recording, either a computer or a separate recorder. But what's going back to that device, what the person on Skype will hear, will be everything except for themselves. This is why it's called a mix minus. It's the mix minus one particular thing. So you're not sending their audio back to themselves, so that way they're not hearing an echo of themselves as they're talking through Skype. You'd want to set this up with a mix minus setup on your mixer, and if you need help with that, then please let me know. I'm developing some things that'll help you learn how to set up a mix minus for exactly your mixer. But a mixer 
allows you to do this quite easily. If your mixer has an auxiliary send or an FX send, then this is a way that you can connect a mixer mix minus setup for Skype calls. This gives you great ability and great possibilities for being able to live mix your Skype co-host and yourself into a single recording. You still then get control over your volume. Your Skype co-host could potentially hear your sound effects and voicemails and intros and outros and other music and such. So running a Skype mix minus is so much more powerful and flexible on a mixer than just using software to record. But using software does work great. So you can check out the audacity to podcast.com slash ecam that's E C A M M for OS 10 or slash Pamela P A M E L A for windows. And both of these work really well for recording Skype calls. And by the way, I'll recommend some mixers near the end of this podcast that do meet all of these requirements that we'll be talking about in this episode, or most of them. So number one reason, Skype Mix Minus. Number two, multiple in-studio co-hosts. If you're ever thinking about having someone else on your podcast with you, then I think you should get a mixer. Yeah, you can do the Skype calls, but what if you have someone in studio with you? then it's best for you to have a microphone for each person who's talking in the podcast. Don't try and share a microphone. It doesn't work out well. My wife and I have done this when we started our Once Upon a Time podcast over at oncepodcast.com. I had only three microphones in my studio and four people that needed to talk. So my wife and I would share a microphone. It just didn't work out very well. Not it didn't cause marital problems, but it's just the issue of trying to share a microphone and getting letting each other have their turn speaking, and it's hard to work with. So I really recommend that every co-host needs their own microphone. By the way, side note, every co-host needs their own pair of headphones as well. Go to theaudacitytopodcast.com slash HA400 for my review of some equipment that will help each co-host have their own microphones. But if you're recording with multiple microphones. Yes, if you use a USB microphone like the Audio-Technica ATR2100, which can connect to your computer via USB, you can connect multiple USB microphones to your computer. But if you're on Windows, then you have to add extra software that costs, and that extra software is uh, called Virtual Audio Cable, which you can check at the Audacity to Podcast slash VAC. And on the OS X side, you can create an aggregate audio device, but this still has many limitations to it, like recording live sound effects. And if your computer is starting to get overloaded, then your recording won't go very well. You only have so many USB ports. This can become a hassle to try and combine multiple USB mics. It's possible, but it's also a hassle. But if you have microphones that can plug into a mixer, then all you have to do You don't have to set up anything else on your computer, audio settings, drivers, anything like that. You just plug the microphone into your mixer and turn on the volume for that channel. That's it. You're ready to go with an additional co-host. So whenever you're talking about having more than one person on your podcast, that's when I think you need a mixer. And it's a good reason to get a mixer. It simplifies the process for you of having multiple people with microphones for each of them. Number three reason for getting a mixer for podcasting, mixing sounds, any kind of sounds like music, sound clips, sound clips, voicemails, could even be co-hosts, anything like that, where it's a sound that you are playing through your computer for your intros, your outros, your segues, bumpers, little clips here or there, just little random sound effects or anything. You would want a mixer for these things because it can make it so much easier that instead of recording your podcast and then adding these sound effects later, or as many people like to call it, adding it in post, post post-production, post-processing, post-editing, whatever you want to call it, instead of adding these things in later, which takes a lot of time, if you use a mixer to mix in your sound effects and any kinds of sounds, then it's going straight into your recording, saving you so much time. Then you don't have to go back through your recording and add those sound effects in the right place, get their volume just right. You can do that all right on the fly by mixing that into your computer, or I'm sorry, mixing it into your mixer because it's designed for mixing audio. 
and then you can adjust your volume as it's going. You can turn it up, turn it down, fade it in, fade it out, anything like that on your mixer. It's a great way to be able to mix the sounds into your recording and saving so much time. A lot of podcasters will call this live to drive because they're mixing everything together and it's going straight onto their hard drive or straight onto an external recorder. So that way there's no editing in needed afterward. You don't have to put those sound effects in. So that's my number three reason, mixing sounds. Number four is a mixer will give you so much more control over your podcast audio. If you have a quiet co-host and you need to raise their volume, that's no problem because you can just turn up their volume on the mixer. If you want to fade your music in or out while you're talking, no problem. Just do that on the mixer. If you want to quickly mute someone or yourself while someone coughs or maybe adjust the microphone, no problem. Just click the little mute button on the mixer. The mixer gives you so much control over this and much more in the audio of your podcast. You can mix things, mute things, solo one thing or another. You can adjust volumes and so much more. And it's all done live, real time, while you're recording. And this process can be quite seamless for running all of these things on your mixer. It gives you so much more control over your audio and over what's going on in your podcast. And you don't have to worry about doing this all later. Yes, it does take more practice to be able to do these things, to know what the right volume levels are and how much you should or shouldn't be constantly playing with your volume levels. Most of the time, I set my mixer and I leave it there. But sometimes I'll notice that my co-host is signaling to me that they need to adjust their microphone. So I'll quickly press the mute button on the mixer so that they can touch their microphone and move it if they don't have a shock mount on it. So that way we don't pick up that line noise or the, the thumping sound in the microphone, and it's extremely seamless. You have no idea how many times people move their microphones in my podcast because I quickly mute them so you don't hear it at all, or I, usually, unless they bump it and that's unexpected. But a mixer gives you so much more control than over what's going on in the audio of your podcast. Number five, connecting professional gear and using this for your podcast. USB microphones and headsets are really popular for podcasters, for starting podcasters, but I really don't recommend them. The only USB audio device I would ever recommend would be the Audio-Technica ATR2100 microphone, but it's also XLR, so it's not USB only. But And that's, by the way, about $34 right now on Amazon.com. XLR microphones are the professional way to go. If you want a nice microphone then it's going to be an XLR microphone. And if you have multiple microphones of multiple styles and quality, but they're all XLR, a mixer provides a way that you can plug in this professional level audio equipment. You don't have to worry about upgrading or switching devices. If your mixer has XLR ports, just plug it in and you're ready to go. You can also plug in a whole range of other professional audio devices into a mixer. Most mixers have RCA inputs and outputs, quarter inch inputs and outputs, stereo abilities, mono, XLR, balanced or unbalanced inputs and outputs, all designed for professional audio equipment. So whether you're working with cheap XLR equipment or audio equipment through RCA or professional level stuff or anything at line level or anything like that. Most likely, if it's professional, you can plug it into a mixer. So you don't have to worry about constantly upgrading your equipment in order to connect other equipment. But most likely, if you get a good mixer, it'll stick with you for many, many years to come. And I'll recommend several mixers toward the end of this podcast. So just quick review. Number one, Skype Mix Minus. Number two, multiple in-studio co-hosts. Number three, mixing sounds. Number four, more control. Number five, connecting a professional or connecting professional gear. And number six, higher quality mic preamps. Every kind of microphone out there needs some kind of preamplifier. It powers the mic, it amplifies the signal to a usable level, and You can get certain adapters like an XLR to USB adapter and be able to connect professional microphones into your computer directly. But if the preamps are cheap, then you'll get a constant 
hiss in your recording. It won't just be line noise or interference, but a definite hiss inside your recording with cheap preamps. And often these XLR to USB preamps are like that. They're cheap, they work, yeah, but they're not the best quality, and you'll get that constant hiss in your recording. Really cheap mixers also have cheap preamps. So you want to stay above a certain level. Usually if you go above about $100, then you'll have some moderate quality preamps in your mixer that will then be able to raise the volume of your mic without introducing that hiss. But mixers then, if you're looking at a professional mixer, will come with quality preamplifiers. So you don't have to worry about the line noise, the hiss in your recording, anything like that, because you'll be using higher quality preamps. By comparison, I use a Zoom H4n as my portable audio recorder, and I can plug XLR microphones directly into the Zoom H4n. It has built-in preamps, but they're not that great. If I plug in the ATR2100 USB microphone into the Zoom H4n's XLR inputs, it introduces a noticeable level of hiss. But if I plug the Audio-Technica microphone into my mixer, that hiss isn't there. In fact, if you listen to my Once Upon a Time podcast, you may not realize which one of us is using the Audio-Technica microphone, but listen to it and see if you can tell which of us is using it. You can check that out at oncepodcast.com. It would be either me, Jeremy, or my wife, Jenny. One of us is using the Audio-Technica ATR2100 and see if you can pick it out and let me know. You can comment on the show notes at theaudacitytopodcast.com slash 124. So look for a mixer that is above $100, and it will most likely have these moderate quality preamps that will then allow you to connect your professional audio equipment and not get the extra hiss. There are things that you can even get, like my friend Ray Ortega over at the Podcaster Studio recently reviewed the FET head. And it's a little device that you plug into an XLR microphone and then plug that into a mixer. It's an inline amplifier and it introduces it. Well, it doesn't introduce noise, but it increases the volume of your recording. So it's a great way to get a louder recording from your microphone without getting that extra hiss that any kind of preamp might introduce if it's a cheap preamp. Number seven real-time audio enhancement and effects. It really depends on what kind of podcast you're producing and what kind of microphone you're using, but most mixers out there offer the ability for you to do some basic equalization control. I'm using the Behringer X1832 USB mixer that offers four different equalization controls and this would be different ranges of my audio so right now i'm going to turn up the low end of my audio and you notice it sounds a lot more bassier maybe a bit too bassy maybe headache inducing now if i turn that all the way down now i'm sounding a bit sharper i'll turn down some of the low mids all the way and turn down the higher range all the way but then turn up the highest range the most and now i'm sounding a bit more sharp, a bit more pointed. These are all settings I'm getting in real time on my mixer, and I'm now turning them back to their usual settings where I have them. What I do is I give just a very, very slight bass boost to myself and my co-hosts with my equalization settings. This results in just a little bit more presence, a little bit better quality sound, But be careful with this because you could change things a bit too much and then literally give people headaches. I've listened to podcasts before where they have done something really badly with their equalization and their multiband compression. And when I listen through earbuds or headphones or anywhere that is on my ears, I would literally get headaches. Headaches, and I'm not using literally in the figurative sense, I'm using the word literally in the literal sense. It would give me headaches listening to their audio, so be careful how you process that. Some mixers will even give you some crazy abilities, and that would be with some special effects. Like now, I'm suddenly a chipmunk, or I can turn down my 
settings just a little bit to use instead. Lower my voice. And now I could use this for maybe some kind of live audio drama or uh, anything where you need this kind of vocal processing. But a mixer can also provide more options for you in the special effects that you might want to use for your podcast or for whatever kind of recording that you might be doing. A mixer can do things like add echo, add ambiance sound, do weird delays and uh, reverb effects, but that might be useful to you. Now, that kind of stuff, be very careful with it, especially the chipmunk thing. I, I would say only use that in a comedy podcast and use it very, very, very rarely. But it can be something that a mixer can do for you in real time Instead of having to do this in an audio processor afterward or enhance your bass or clarify some of the tones of your podcast afterward, some mixers that have advanced equalization can also be used to help filter out certain background noise like fan noise or air conditioners running in the background. If they're in a certain frequency range, you might be able to bring down just that frequency and thus reduce the noise that you're picking up in your room just by using your mixer and not having to do any kind of post-processing. So again, it's speeding up your workflow. It's simplifying your workflow. You don't have to do that stuff afterward in Audacity, Audition, or whatever audio editing program that you use. So these audio effects and enhancements can be great and they're real-time. You can adjust them as you need them. A mixer can also allow you to do some basic compression. Like I'm using a Behringer MDX 4600 compressor limiter gate attached to my mixer. So it's doing some extra compression on top of that. But if I turn off the Behringer MDX 20, 4600, which you're hearing right now, now you're hearing my unprocessed voice. So my quiets are a little bit quieter and my louds are a little bit qu louder. But many mixers like the Behringer line of mixers that I have links to in the show notes will offer a built-in single knob compressor, which I just turned up all the way, and I'm now using the built-in compressor on the mixer. So if I whisper very quietly, it still comes in nice volume. Or I could talk really loud, and it's also coming in loud, but it's reducing that amount of variation in the audio. Now I'm back to just my normal voice as I normally have it. So a mixer is doing this stuff for me. That's saving me time afterwards. So a mixer does real-time audio enhancement and effects. Number eight, a mixer is uh, getting a mixer is a great way to connect a wireless phone to your mixer for easy live calls. You can get a simple $7 or even less iPod audio video cable. This is where it looks like it's a stereo jack on one end, but it actually has three black stripes on it. It's a, a, a four-way input on one end, 3.5 millimeter. And on the other end, it would have RCA male jacks. So you'd have red, white, and yellow. Generally, you can plug this into almost any smartphone, certainly any smartphone, or many dumb phones work with this too. Plug it in and generally the yellow line would be the microphone or the input into the phone and the red and white lines would be the output from the phone. So connect this to your mixer, set up a mix minus setup with this, and then you can take and make phone calls live in your recording just with your cell phone. No extra fancy equipment, no extra software, anything like that. This little iPod AV cable is only $7 or less. And I have a link in the show notes at theaudacitypodcast.com slash 126 if you want to check this out. I have one of these and it works great. I can connect my smartphone to make phone calls or consider it this way. Connect a smartphone, an iPod touch, a tablet like an iPad or an Android tablet, anything like that and use it as your Skype device. So you don't need an extra computer. You can just use a portable device as your Skype device instead of a separate computer or bogging down your computer to handle the Skype calls or anything like that. So you are connecting more equipment to your mixer, and it's a simple, simple little cable. You can't do that 
just plugged straight into a computer. It's not very easy to record phone calls with just a computer unless you do something like yucky blog talk radio, which costs a lot. But please don't use blog talk radio for live streaming. Use it only for the telephone calls if you need that. Number nine, multi-channel recording. This gets a little bit more advanced, but this is something that I take advantage of regularly with my mixer. I have a Behringer X1832 USB mixer, and I've previously used a Behringer X1204 USB mixer, and both of these offer the ability for me to output in four channels through analog lines. So that is, on both of these mixers, and several other mixers would be similar to this, it's usually through two quarter-inch jacks and two XLR jacks. So what I have are some converting cables that then plug into my Zoom H4n, and I record my podcasts in four channels on my Zoom H4n. That way, I can play music, sound effects, anything like that into my recording, and it's recorded onto a separate track from my voice. The advantage this gives me is I can then edit this later so I can process my voice differently than my sound effects. So I might run a compressor on my voice that I don't want to run that compressor on my music because then it would mess up the music fades, fade ins and fade outs and such. Maybe I just want to increase the volume of the background music or I realize the background music was too loud here and you can't hear me talking in the recording so I can bring it down. Or what frequently happens to me when I'm ending a podcast episode, is I will be talking and I realize, oh, I ran out of things to say and the music needs to keep going. So I just continue doing my live mix as I normally would, raise the volume when I need to, and then all I do in my audio editor is I just shift the background music to where it needs to be. Or sometimes it happens the other way around. I realize I'm talking too much at the end and I've used up my background music And so then I can just shift it the other way and move it so that it fades in just when I need it to because I'm recording into multiple channels. Some mixers, expensive mixers, can even give you this ability to record in multiple channels plugged into your computer through FireWire. Now, these are really expensive mixers. The cheapest one that I could find that's still being produced and that's reliable enough for this is the Mackie Onyx 820i. It's a FireWire mixer, and the cheapest price I could get on it is $420 from Amazon.com. But if you want more channels than it, because it's only three XLR inputs, if you wanted more than that, then you could look at the Mackie Onyx 1220i FireWire mixer, which is $650 on Amazon and B&H. Really expensive if you want to go that direction, but it is possible with a mixer. Now, something like that gives you even more control than just recording into an external recorder because this way, any program that you use for recording, like Audition and even Audacity, will recognize that this audio device has multiple channels and it will record each of them separately. So each microphone that's being recorded or plugged into your mixer would be recorded on its own track inside of Audacity or even more advanced software that lets you record multiple channels at a time. So yes, this has awesome abilities, very expensive. I'd love to have that ability someday, but then again, I probably don't need that power. I know some people will think they need that ability to separate every voice, but realistically, you might not. As long as you get your audio right in the beginning, setting the mixer settings just the right way for your voice and for your environment and for your co-hosts and for the microphones that you're using, then you probably won't need to adjust it or enhance it too much later on. So multi-channel recording is a great ability that a mixer can provide if you get the right mixer and are connected to the right equipment. And number 10 reason for getting a mixer for podcasting, more output possibilities without relying on software. Let's say you want to bring in two Skype callers, you want to live stream your recording, you want to record to a portable audio device and backup recording to your computer, you're connecting three computers, all of these different outputs, and a mixer can connect to all of them. You'll need a bigger mixer to connect to more output devices, but as it is, I have 
several outputs being used from my mixer. I'm going to headphones. I'm going to my computer for live streaming. I'm going to my Zoom H4n for four channel recording. So I have four cables going from the mixer to that. I have cables connecting to a smartphone for live calls, as well as another computer for Skype calls or any kind of live streaming I might want to do through that computer. So I've got all of these outputs coming from the mixer. Try and do that with a computer and maintain your audio quality. You can't do that. You can do some fancy routing and connections and outputs with software, but especially with many newer computers that are starting to get these smart audio plugs where it's either headphones or a microphone, then you're really limited on your outputs from this. So a mixer then provides these extra outputs so you can connect to many different things and output to many things. You could have in-studio monitor speakers or output to a PA system if you podcast in front of a live audience. So many possibilities with a mixer. And that's the thing that a mixer does for you in short is it mixes things and it gives you so much more flexibility and more possibilities in what you can do with your audio. So my 10 reasons to get a mixer for podcasting are number one, Skype mix minus number two, multiple in studio co-hosts number three, mixing sounds number four, more control over your audio number five, connecting professional audio equipment number six, higher quality mic preamps number seven, real time audio enhancement and effects number eight, connecting to a wireless phone for easy live calls number nine, multi-channel recording and number 10 more output possibilities without relying on software now i'd love to hear from you what's your experience in using a mixer for podcasting why do you use a mixer for podcasting do you have a reason that i didn't list here or do you want to agree or disagree with any of these reasons i'd love to hear from you please comment on the show notes at the audacity to podcast.com slash 124 and let me know your experience and what you think and what you're using and why you're using it now there are several great mixers out there a bunch of great mixers out there so i've provided a list in the show notes at the audacity to podcast.com slash 124 to show you the mixers that i recommend for podcasting And generally, you'll see various price points on these. Usually, I recommend the middle of these price points, but you might be on a really tight budget or you might have a lot of money to spend. The general principle that I apply to a lot of purchases, and this certainly applies to your mixer, if you're on a tight budget, then get the cheapest thing you can get by with. The reason I say that is because then that allows you to save up money for what you really need in the future. And that way, when you get it, you'll be able to grow into it. You will definitely need it by then. I liken this to the illustration of buying a TV. If you want a 54-inch or let's say 57-inch TV, but you get a 42-inch TV instead, how likely are you to then get that 57-inch TV? Probably not because you're going to keep feeling like, well, we got the 42 inch. That's pretty close. I do wish I got the 57 inch instead, but the 42 inch is okay. But instead, if you, if you need to get a TV and you buy the cheapest thing you can afford first, it meets the bare minimum of your needs. So you get a little 24 inch TV. It meets your needs for now. It's not all glamorous and everything, but it meets your needs. But then you can save up the money And eventually get that 57 inch or 72 inch or whatever TV and wait for the technology to grow as well and the prices to come down. And then you can get what you actually wanted in the first place without having wasted a lot of money along the way. So that's what I recommend with mixers as well and microphones and so much about podcasting. Get the bare minimum that you need right now, especially if you're just starting out because you may decide you don't want to keep doing this. Get the bare minimum now and then save up for what you'll need in the future. But at the same time, try to get a little bit more than you need or than you think you need. So you might be looking at a mixer with one XLR input. That might be a little bit too small. Instead, consider a mixer with two XLR inputs and you might use that sooner than you think. So here are the mixers that I recommend at different levels. The Behringer Q802 USB mixer is about $80 from Amazon or B&H. 
The Behringer X1204 USB mixer is a fantastic mixer for all kinds of levels of podcasting. This can grow with you really well. The one thing it doesn't have, I started with this mixer and when I first got it, I thought, man, I overspent. I'm never going to use these things. And well, I ended up using all of the inputs and outputs of that mixer and eventually had to upgrade. But it's a fantastic mixer and the one and only thing it's missing, in my opinion, are insert inputs or inserts so I could connect an external compressor limiter gate. So I upgraded to the Behringer X1832 USB mixer, which is what I'm still using today. It's a great mixer. It's about $270 on BNH or Amazon.com. You can find the links in the show notes for this episode. It's a great mixer, lots of inputs, lots of outputs, lots of abilities on it. And you may not need to connect an external compressor limiter gate if your mixer has some compressors built into it, which the X1204 USB does have that on it. Also, the Mackie line is a bit higher quality than the Behringer line of mixers. The Mackies have a little bit nicer preamps in it, so that means you can turn up your microphone without getting as much hiss from the microphone. The Pro FX8 and Pro FX16 are great mixers. If I was ever going to upgrade my mixer again, I would look at the Mackie Pro FX16. This thing is a beast and it has so many controls on it, but it's huge, gigantic mixer. But that's where I'd be looking at upgrading to. But you can also look at some of the lower end of the Mackie line, the 802 VLZ3 or the 1202 VLZ3 mixers are also great options for you. And you can find those links in the show notes for this episode at the audacity to podcast.com slash 124. If you want that ability to record multiple channels into your computer with the fire wire, then look at the Mackie Onyx 820i or the 1220i series. And I have links to those in the show notes as well. But keep in mind, these are really expensive. The 820i is $420 on Amazon. The Pro FX 16 is about $490 on Amazon. So compare how many channels you're getting on one versus the other. The 1220i with several inputs and outputs on it and FireWire recording it is around $650. So if you really need that power, then you might want to consider that. If you're doing some kind of special audio dramas, live audio dramas, then this might be a case where you actually need that independent channel recording. But you can get this list of mixers that I recommend in the show notes at theaudacitytopodcast.com slash 124. And I'd love to hear from you. What mixer do you use and what has been your experience with these mixers? Please comment there on the show notes and let me know what you think. Also, send me your feedback for future episodes of the Audacity to Podcast. You can ask questions or send suggestions of things you'd like me to cover about how to podcast or how to use Audacity. Just email feedback at theaudacitytopodcast.com or call 903-231-2221. You can also use your computer or iOS device to send a voice message just by going to the website, theaudacitytopodcast.com. Now, I've got coming up on May 18th, 2013, another Learn Audacity webinar. This is a fantastic opportunity for you to learn how to use Audacity like a professional. You'll be able to use it for podcasting or music editing, voiceover work, audio editing. I'll teach you how to record, how to export, how to edit your audio, enhance your audio, how to manage your plugins, and so much more. This is a fantastic two-hour long webinar that I'll be teaching on May 18th, 2013 from learnaudacity.com. The tickets are $100 per person to participate in that live webinar, and I think you will love this. Everyone who's attended this before has really loved it. They've benefited from this and really appreciated the extra information that they received about how to use Audacity. And everyone who registers gets a free copy of the session as a downloadable video, even if they don't make it to the live webinar, they still receive a copy. So I'd love to have you as part of the Learn Audacity webinar on May 18th, 2013. If it's after that date and you'd like to register for a future webinar or eventually when I turn this into a product that you can purchase, 
and learn how to use Audacity, just go to that website, learnaudacity.com, and it will have the latest information for you. So I'd love to hear from you on what you're interested in for future episodes of the Audacity Podcast, and I'd love to hear what you're doing with the mixer and why you use a mixer for podcasting. Again, please comment on the show notes over at theaudacitypodcast.com slash 124 to let me know what kind of mixer you're using and what are your reasons for using a mixer and whether you agree or disagree with my list of 10 reasons that you should get a mixer for your podcast. Please follow me on Twitter at The Ramen Noodle, and please join me when I record the podcast live on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time in Daylight Time, that's GMT minus four, over at theaudacitytopodcast.com slash live. Also, I'd love it if you'd leave some ratings and reviews for me in iTunes. You can review the audio edition at theaudacitytopodcast.com slash iTunes, or review the video edition over at theaudacitypodcast.com slash iTunes video. And I'd love it if you'd subscribe to the podcast so you'd receive every episode automatically. And now that I've given you some of the guts and taught you some of the tools, it's time for you to go podcast with passion, organization, and dialogue. I'm Daniel J. Lewis. Thank you so much for listening. The Audacity to Podcast is a proud member of Noodle Mix Network. Find more of our podcasts to make you think, laugh, and succeed at noodle.mx. Like theorize over once upon a time, laugh with our clean comedy, learn how to be productive from Eric Fisher, get a Christian worldview on politics and movies, and learn philosophy behind science fiction, all at noodle.mx. The Audacity to Podcast is also a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Find more at techpodcast.com. There have been several recent episodes of so many different tech podcasts out there, like a review of the Iron Man 3 game for iPad or This Day in Tech History and getting powerful graphics 